PDP caucuses demands prosecution of NCC officials over Electoral Act bill. And what legal and safety repercussions could arise from the arrest of Namdi Kanu and Sunday Goho? These and more we shall be examining on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The People's Democratic Party PDP caucus in the House of Representatives have called on the appropriate authorities uh, to arrest and prosecute officials of the National Communications Commission, NCC, for claiming that the electronic transmission of results by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, was not possible in the country. Earlier, NCC officials had claimed that the 2018 technical reports of the NCC showed that only about 50% of the polling units had 3G, while 49% had 2G network and below. The P PDP caucus leader, Kingsley Chinda, said the NCC officials lied to Nigerians while on oath and as such must be prosecuted for allegedly misleading Nigerians. Well, uh, joining us to discuss this is Professor Paul Ananaba. He is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you very much, Professor, for being here. Thank you. Great. Um, give, listening to the background, I mean, the whole of last week into this week, it's been, you know, a row between the Nigerians and members of the National Assembly. And of course, it's the Electoral Act bill that's been on the lips of people, including PIB. But we're not talking about the PIB today. We're looking at, um, you know, the Electoral Act bill. Um, now, the Senate had taken its position, obviously, and now the ball has fallen to um, the, the House of Representatives, who are now on recess. And well, everybody has their fingers crossed, hoping that um, when they come back, we would hear something good from them. But give us your take on all that has transpired on the floor of the National Assembly on the Electoral Act bill? Well, let me start by saying that the issue of the Electoral Act is so important. It's significant. It is sensitive. So the National Assembly members, and indeed every Nigerian, should take the issues of the Electoral Act much, much serious. You see, because governance and the political structure is based on this electoral act, because that's how you elect people. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at our election trajectory over the years, I happen to have been involved in elections and election petitions it trickles down and goes back to the Electoral Act. Mm -hmm. And then you see that at some point, it's as if it is now the courts that give mandates. It is out of interpretation of the Electoral Act. And if we don't get it right from the Electoral Act, it will be difficult in 2023. So you're telling me that all of the problems that we've had, all of the hiccups that we've experienced in our electoral processes is because of the, the irregularities of, the, the of our electoral state act. of the electoral act. And that's why there's been that call that the electoral act should be amended. I'll give you an example. The violence, smashing of ballot boxes, writing of results, and all that declaring the right, right person or the wrong person, do rest and all that, are all within the Electoral Act. And that's why many Nigerians, particularly who are who experienced in elections, saw the amendment of the Electoral Act as so important. Now, when we get to uh, the real problem in the Electoral Act, you begin to look at the accreditation system. If you accredit and you transmit, you are beginning to check overvoting. Because overvoting is excess of votes over accreditation. Now, um, 
Generally, people thought that overvoting was just um, having more people uh, registered in a, a polling booth uh, voting in an election. Mm -hmm. That that that's not that's not that's one part. That's not even our problem in the country. Our problem is more votes than those accredited. Now, when you look at the results sheet, like uh, EC8, EC8, EC8 series, you will now see that you, you accredit most of the time that the voting, the number of votes will be higher than the number of accredited. Uh, uh, persons. Mm -hmm. And that's why transmission of, I want Nigerians to understand the issues. The transmission of uh, uh, results electronically. Uh, no, the, the, uh, uh, the, the transmission of the initial part, which is accreditation, accreditation. is important. Now, if you, have, if you transmit, and it is because previously, the electoral act did not cover most of these things. So when you bring those reports, believing that the tribunal will listen to you, they'll be trashed. Hmm. Now, if we have that accreditation gone in, there will be, there's no basis to alter from EC8, EC8 series on that. Then the actual voting. When the actual voting takes place, as a result is being uh, collated, it is transmitted. Nobody will carry ballot box. Nobody will stop ballot box. What, what are you going to do with it? Because as you are speaking, the result is already in Abuja. Mm. And I go further to say that I had advocated that the, the National Assembly should actually uh, make a further provision that um, 24 hours after the election, I make must issue certified true copy of the uh, accreditation result and the votes. That way we will, we will reduce the ele election petitions. That way you will lose the election, you know you've lost it. The distractions from election petition and all that will be a thing of the past. So it's so important. It's at the heart of, in the heart and soul of our electoral process. Now, when you come to hear that, oh, you, you INEC should uh, uh, clarify from NCC before it, will, it can transmit, I don't understand where that comes from. Because constitutionally speaking, INEC has the powers to determine the elections and the appropriate mode of holding the elections. If, as we have heard, uh, by 2018, we had 50% coverage of 3G. We still have almost two years. Assuming even that 2018 is it. But by 20, we, we, we have, the information is that by 2019, we have gotten up to 74 point percent. Mm -hmm. Now, why should we be talking about coverage now? When we have more than a year, we are not that a, we are a country that has the resources to say, because this is so important, let us increase yes, the capacity. Yes, we can, but have we done it? Because I think that this is the argument that some of these members were making, whether we agree with them or not. But this is the argument they were making. Is there a certainty that these areas have been covered? Has coverage been expanded to certain areas? I think I remember somebody even said on the floor that uh, there was no coverage in his area. I think it was... Uh, yeah, Arjuna Yes. Uh, Arjuna Arjuna. Although there are people from his area who also came out to re you know, rebuff him. But uh, we were a country that can afford it, but have we done it? Now, the point we made is, can you remember the amount of money INEC has been getting? INEC came up and put those proposals. They would have done, I expect they would have done their homework. So what we are trying to say is, all that is required is for INEC to give a proper budgeting that will cover even if there is none. Mm -hmm. Technology today is no longer rocket science. That any part of this country can get even some gadgets that will ensure transmission, even for that particular day of the election. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't even be an issue. All that ought to have been said for me is 
we have yes there will be transmission i make do all that is required to ensure there is transmission so that we can have credibility in the elections. Well, INEC had come out to um, also say that they do not have problems with transmitting these results uh, exactly. all across the country. And so, of course, it makes Nigerians really wonder what um, the, the, the National Assembly members have, why they have decided to go this route. And I, I, I want to ask you the same question. Yes. You're not a member of the National Assembly. Yes, but why I'm do you not. think that they have decided to go this route? I'm not in their minds, but I know that we, we politicize national issues. This is a bipartisan issue. It's, it's not um, uh, it's not matter of political leaning. Because some of the people in PDP today will still cross carpet to a a APC. Some of the people in APC today will also cross carpet to PDP. Once elect, uh, they begin national the Congress and people start losing grip of their hold on parties, mm -hmm. they start looking for where they will get proper hold. Mm. And when that happens, so so it, it doesn't really, it's not even in the best interest of the pe person being partisan in refusing to do what Nigerians will need as of now. I think that transmission of results is so important. Any, uh, without hindrance on INEC, any hindrance on that is a recipe for uh, uncertainty in the elections. I do election petitions in many rounds, and I know that it's not in the best interest of this country to continue to have high level of election petitions. There should be cases where there should be petition, yes. And if there is electronic recording that is very clear to everybody, many people will be discouraged from challenging elections. And then credibility will gradually be built into our system. I think that the National Assembly, see, that it is still within them to try to rectify that situation. I mean, we saw how the Senate, you know, rounded it off. It also, amidst the hues and the cries, people were kicking against it. Governors even joined their voices. But the Senate seemed to have, you know, made up yeah, their if mind. The if the House of Reps goes, comes, comes with a different version, they will need to meet to harmonize. That is the hope. Yes. That is the hope. They will meet to, need to meet to harmonize. The, the, the law. Let's talk about some other important things in the Electoral Act that is of major concern. Let's talk about electro election financing. Um, we, also re have <laughs> we also have realized that um, the cap has been raised, in fact, ridiculously for some people. I remember that um, in the last elections um, for the presidency, I think they had to pay about 27 million, and now we're talking billions. Election finances is an issue that Nigerians have been concerned about, especially with the not too young to run bill and, you know, trying to get more people on board. Do you think that this was done on purpose to try to um, maybe rid people of the opportunity to run for offices or to just preserve these offices for a certain group of people? What exactly is the idea with this raising well, of... Well, my speaking for myself, I... I felt disappointed with that, those provisions because it also goes to show that uh, we may not be paying the appropriate attention to anti-corruption. If you give latitude for presidential election to up to 15 billion, what are you saying? You are saying that any candidate that wants to run for presidency should be able to have 15 billion or be capable of raising from where? Those who will help in raising that money, after raising it, won't it become an investment for them that they need to draw from? What are you making out of the country? What are you teaching the younger ones? So it means that one should rush and get money by any means. And then uh, if you want to run an election, look at five governors, five billion. Even when it was 27 million, we were not able to control it. If you now say 15 billion, I, you will find out that uh, if to run an election that you have need over 100 billion. And that's the problem. It cuts off those who don't have the means, but who have this country at heart to serve this country. So we shouldn't monetize our election. Everything is becoming a money affair. It shouldn't be so. We need people 
who love this country, who wants to serve this country, not necessarily those who have all the money. Because by the time I'm asking you to come and donate to my campaign, I am going to make concessions, mm. known and unknown. It will lead to, uh, I, I mean, uh, selling uh, people selling the assets. It will lead to, um, you know, seeding some political offices to even mediocres. Mm and less pro low productivity, and we start complaining. And whatever happened to a level playing field for, all, I mean, all and sundry, just as you have said, those who really um, need to want to serve, who may not necessarily have the type of backing or the monies, the finances, uh, I mean, where that, does that come in? Of course, let me also throw in the, there that we one of the positives is that we have been given op uh, an opening for those who do not necessarily need a political party, so we have... Uh, independence running, but if <laughs> that 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 for now will exist in theory in Nigeria. Why why do you think because, so? Because um, you, you when I, Nigerians need to come to terms to with it and be able to run it. As we speak now, most political elements in this country belong to a political party. Now you and, could, you can only can change that culture. You can only yeah, over time we we'll now begin to know that oh really independent candidacy can work. It's not automatic. Why do we have to wait over time? Why can't we test it now? No, I agree that it's, we have independent candidates. But I'm saying, it, when you now come into politics, who will the independent candidate will be having a meeting with? He will have to source everything for himself. That's the problem. Well, that's when the, he will be able to actually get to the people directly. And maybe the person can succeed in. I can't and, and, and cut you want and, to cuts, run, and you bypass want, all of the yes, party want to run for, next. You want to run for presidency in this country and you're an independent candidate. Well, you set realistically, up your should you start... I mean, for an independent, realistically, should you start by running for presidency? So why do we set up a situation where uh, people are practically excluded from the beginning? You want to be a governor you work in a state... And then you begin to set up your own structure in a whole state. That you, the 15 billion will be a child's play. So these are the realities, you know, the is and the ought in the arguments. Now, who monitors this money, the, the, this funding? Who monitors it? How it is gotten? How it is spent? You are talking about Electoral Offenses Commission. Are we, are we ready for it? I, I, I encourage an election offenses commission. Perhaps if we had that, it would have helped us in, to some extent. In, 20, in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, um, that was the first time um, Serap uh, started asking questions about political party uh, and funding. funding. Um, in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, they took the PDP uh, and the APC to court asking that they make their party finances open as we speak. It's still yet to be, to be adhered to. And it's not that it's anything outside our laws. There is, there is some provision for those monies to be made open. And here we are talking about monies that have gone up to 15 billion naira for you know, um, party tickets. So really, um, who's overseeing all of this? And, That's and, the point. and how, who holds um, these parties to account? That's the point. I, I, and I tell you when, you, are, when you are looking at an election issue, the issue are, and, you are, and you are questioning an election based on uh, malpractices or corrupt practices that, uh, well, for example, some people committed some of it. You, the, the tribunal will tell you that you, couldn't, you, you have to prove it beyond reasonable doubt. Mm. If we had election offenses commission and they are timed, they will be able to c conclude such and provide evidence for it for election petition. So that is why it's important to have an election com uh, offenses commission. And it will, uh, I believe that such commission should be given powers to monitor, investigate, how independent, and monitor. How independent should that be? Because I'm asking this question and you know where I'm coming from. We have, yes. the, we have INEC, which has an appendage independent at the beginning, but really is INEC independent. And then that's the detail for the ICPC and the EFCC. So if we're asking for this offense commission, uh, who's electing yeah, them? Yeah, who's, that, who's putting them well, there? Well, the, my, my attitude, I agree entirely with the scenario you're looking at. But you know my attitude to it is that by 2014, did we know that PDP that wanted to rule for 60 years will leave power? So you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't know. 
So a party may think that, oh, we are, we'll be here for 100 years. And Nigerians think otherwise. In fact, the mere existence of that commission and depending on the leadership of that commission, headship of that commission, we may begin to see a reduction in the, in the level of offenses and crimes in our elections. Because it will not just be INEC alone. INEC doesn't have what it takes to run election and to look after the criminal content. Mm -hmm. And the, the security agencies that are sent to support INEC do not have such, they are weaker even than the INEC in, in the independence issue. Mm -hmm. So a, a, an, a, an electoral offenses commission will certainly be better. Mm. I'm, I'm really curious because, again, it falls back to the National Assembly. Will the National Assembly be determining who heads that particular commission? Well, headship, I know, like I pointed out, such, such um, offices, we may begin to try out certain things, not allowing the presidency to, nominate, to appoint such persons. We've been used to public officers being nominated by the president or appointed or not that at best they say they go through senatorial uh, screening. But isn't that what the constitution well, allows? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, 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 this commission is not provided for in the constitution. So as we're bringing in that by law, we, we could uh, try to see whether such person will have to be elected or may have to be screened even by another organization Rather than going to the Senate, we have to be screened by maybe justices of the Supreme Court or Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. So that they look at it will be much more out of politics. Ah, interesting. Well, l let's talk about other issues. Uh, Mr. President obviously is yet to assent to um, this bill because we're waiting for the House of Representatives um, to assent to it. Do you think that Mr. President will have any reservations as to what is already um, on that paper? Well, the Mr. Mr. President has a legal team. He has the chief law officer of the country. So um, I will expect that the President, this is, this is a very important piece of legislation, will want assent. If he has objections, those objections will be taken uh, care of quickly because the, everybody is looking at that and looking at 2023. Every day we are closer to 2023. So, and you could see that there's been much traffic at the National Assembly. I expect the presidency to do that and that um, we we'll have this law in good time so that Nigerians can understand the law. Practitioners will understand the new legal regime and possibly try it in one of these eight elections that are coming, mm -hmm. and then test them in the courts and tribunals and we'll see how it goes. And you just played to my next question because I was going to ask that um, the fact that we've seen you know politics play and you know party sentiments come to play in you know um, some of the content of this bill. Um, should Nigerians what should, what lessons should Nigerians learn from all that has happened? Because a lot of people. Not naturally are not interested in things like this until it's election day and then we scream and shout that ballot boxes have been snatched or we're not really having free fair and credible elections. But shouldn't we be involved from this from this point down to the election day? Because I, I, we always wait till it's election day before I tell start. you, many Nigerians are getting interested in politics. Some willingly and some just have to. I mean many people today when you ask them, what, what are you doing? I'm a politician. You know, the economy is not doing so well. So people, money comes in much more from politics. So people now become professional politicians. And um, people are also getting more educated, more universities. And as more people are getting educated, they are beginning to know that with all your funds, with all your wealth, uh, power, is greater than your word. The, the, the occupant of a political office can put up a policy or a law that will run your ground. Hmm. So people are beginning to understand the relevance of political life. And so it's not so easy now to cede power. It's not so easy now to ignore power. 
even uh, people on the streets, even the Free Readers Association on the streets, <laughs> yes. corners and newspapers. If you work, if you if you see the level of analysis and political uh, awareness, you will be wondering. Mm. So we are g making progress in that direction. As a professor and uh, someone who is in the classroom more often, I've always wanted to ask this question. Should we maybe think of photo education as part of our curriculum? Because I'm thinking that we, we wait for the NOA and the NOA comes alive just a few weeks before the elections. Oh, and, yeah. and of course, the, we can point to issues of not being empowered, not being given the money that they need to you know, do all of that. If I, if I had my way in governance, I would pay so much attention to NOA. The earlier time Mr. President was pre head of state of this country, you remember the war against indiscipline. Yes. Nigerians began to do things differently. Now, it, I also expect that to come up. Uh, it, if we have a lot of emphasis on reorientation, it will go a long way. Now, voter education is important. It should be one of the general courses in all our universities, even up to secondary school level. And not just what I make does. Uh, on the, no, well, let's catch them young. Mm. In, in when we, when I was in primary school, we used to do f civics. Civic education. I don't know. I it was called back civics. In school. Mm. I wish that can come back. Let children from their primary school begin to understand their basic rights. Civics. Mm -hmm. it gets to invest secondary school. We have NACO and all that. Why don't we have a general? one unit course. Every Nigerian should do it, uh, civics, to know your basic rights, your basic duty, just something close to NYS. Mm. You know, a basic duty, the basic duties you owe to the state, what it means to be a Nigerian, the level of patriotism respected, why you should not be ethnic biased or religious biased, why you should see everyone, what is the Nigerianness? Mm. Nigerianness, the word Nigerianness is important. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I wish we had time. I would have gone into all of that. Really, do what, what is what? What is the Nigerianness? In that's my world? that's my coinage of yes. What should be seen in the Nigerian? Yes, of course, because Nigerianness. Yes, because, because at the moment, my understanding is that you have more of an Igbo man, Hausa man, Yoruba, Ejo, Ishan, and all that. Not everyone agrees he's a Nigerian. Yeah, and, and, and so we should begin and, to talk about. And we, and we should be asking those questions. Nigerianness. Yes, because when you go abroad and you meet an American, I mean, you ask, yeah, him, "Where yeah, are you from?" He says, "I'm American." I'm American. Uh, but in Nigeria, I think we're Igbo first. Before we, I mean, you asked me a question today, yes, and, yes. and my answer was yes. So we're all victims of exactly. you know the situation. I mean, it's a conversation for another day. But before we go, um, the average person who's been having this conversation, whether on breakfast tables, in beer parlors, or at the free reader stand, um, is asking, what is the fear of the average member of the National Assembly? Why are our politicians afraid of this election, um, the electronic transmission of results? What is really the apprehension? Uh, Let me speak and, like... Are we not supposed to make our elections foolproof? Well, you know... Um uh, let me speak like someone who has been involved also in politics in, uh, in, in elections. When you leave the election, many of them, many of those in this National Assembly, remember, they don't so much control vote uh, finance like the executive. At the local levels, they are highly respected. Mm -hmm. They are in Abuja, mm -hmm. in the House of Assembly. So people will have been expecting that they will get to Abuja and come with lorry loads of funds and give everybody jobs. They don't bring it. So many of them are not popular at home. Now, the only way to go is to save funds and influence the election by way of using your voice to make sure police, everything, to make sure they win. Mm. They, are no, they will not be very comfortable, in my thinking, to throw the election open and say, whatever comes up. Transmission of results will make it impossible for you to write results. That's what they call, those what they call write results. They get elect, uh, paper, uh, the uh, electoral sheets and write results. And with the bill now going on, if it goes on, 
INEC had no longer has powers to stop a politician that, that comes under duress to be declared. Mm -hmm. He gets declared, you now start going to tribunal. And Marianne, when you get to tribunal, it's a different kettle of fish. You have to prove that you are the actual winner. Mm -hmm. And before you can the get that, proof is on the it's, on, it's on the party. Mm -hmm. And then before you could come out of that, you may not have the resources to pay the quality of lawyers who can do it. Mm -hmm. The political party gets interested to make sure they don't lose the seats. All kinds of things. So it is better they try to win by any means without this transmission. This transmission may not be in the best interest of politicians who have not done well. And it makes me really wonder where the interest of the average Nigerian comes in here. But of course, that's a story for another day. Uh, Professor uh, Paul Ananava is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you very much for being part of this Thank conversation. You. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be discussing the arrest of Namdi Kanu and Sunday Boho and the legal insecurity issues surrounding it. But first, we want to find out from Nigerians what they're thinking on the street. Stay with us. Okay, they say this slant herdsmen then come in, in, in multitude with Okadas, hundred and, and they cannot trace them. But Unam the Kano, they can trace him. So I think Nigerian problem is politics. To me, we know what we are doing. But let's tell ourselves the truth. If they can face Unam the Kano from an outside country and slant herdsmen, they cannot trace them, then who is fooling who? Um, first of all, it's corruption which is normal in the country because and it's not about Nigeria it's about Africa because he was arrested outside Africa outside Nigeria sorry which is not supposed to happen you know and we all know that fighting for your right or for the progress or movement in this country is not possible so um, well it's not right so I would say well there's still a lot of things to fight for in this country. Um, I'm afraid that they should just leave those two men. They should, leave, they should free them. People are cleaning all of the, uh, this side, uh, east side, I mean, and north side. So <laughs> uh, the government, government, government are not doing anything to them. So what do you think? They should just free them. Um, I don't think it's necessary to arrest them because they are fighting for their rights. And uh, I believe they are fighting for everybody because if Nigeria is good, everybody will benefit on that. But if Nigeria is not good, you see how the country is now. If Nigeria is not good, people will not be happy, people will not benefit, things will not be normal. I think these people are just fighting for freedom, to just, just to make sure that things work well.